So in the last video, we have looked at um, what is endothermic, what is exothermic, and then we have looked at some common examples of reactions and processes that are endo, uh, and reactions and processes that are exo. So in this video, we're going to look at more reactions. So just a quick recap, we have seen reactions 1 and 2. And then we have learned that if a reaction involves only bond breaking, then it's endothermic. If a reaction involves only bond forming, then it's exothermic. So for now, let's look at reaction 3. What, uh, hydrogen reacting with oxygen to form water. Now question, is this reaction endothermic or exothermic? Or... Um, if I were to give you an extra option, which is you cannot tell whether it's endo or exo. Now the correct answer is that we cannot tell whether it's endo or exo. Now why is that so? Because this reaction, hydrogen reacting with oxygen to form water, it involves both bond forming and bond breaking. Okay, We need to break the bonds in the reactants before we can form the bonds in the product so most in most chemical reactions um, there's bond breaking in the reactants there's bond forming in the product so how do we know whether these reactions are endo or exo we need to know something called bond energy okay what does bond energy means it means um, the amount of energy uh, required to break that particular bond. For example, if we look at here, to break a hydrogen-hydrogen bond, it actually requires 436 kilojoules per mole of that bond. Okay. Similarly, to break one mole of oxygen-oxygen double bond, it requires 498 kilojoules. Uh, of energy. Now, bond energy also tells us the amount of energy that is released when the bond is formed, which is just, it has the same value but just the opposite sign. Okay, so when an oxygen oxygen double bond is formed, it actually releases 498 kilojoules uh, per mole of the bond form. So for most chemical reactions, as mentioned, it involves bond breaking and it involves bond forming. So how do we know um, whether the reaction is endo or exo? We need to compare the total amount of energy required for bond breaking versus the total amount of energy given out uh, for bond forming or when bonds are formed. Essentially, the equation involved is this delta H equals to bonds broken minus bonds formed so to solve questions like this we need to know which bonds are broken and how many of that bonds are broken as well as which bonds are formed and how many of that bonds are formed and in order to do that it will be good if you can represent your reactants and products in structural formula right what is structural formula it looks like this so we have two hydrogen molecules plus an oxygen molecule to give you two molecules of water now when we represent the equation in uh, structural form it becomes more clear um, that what the bonds that we need to break what do we need to break? We need to break two hydrogen-hydrogen bonds. We need to break one oxygen-oxygen double bond. And then what are the bonds to, that we need to form? We need to form four OH bonds. Now why, why do we have to form four OH bonds? Because in one um, water, in one water molecule, there are actually two OH bonds. And in the reaction, two water molecules are formed so essentially we need to form four oh bonds or rather four oh bonds are formed 
uh, in the reaction okay so how do we compute the energy change of the reaction now is that we need to sum up the energy required to break all the bonds so 2 times 436 plus 498 1 times 498 minus the total amount of energy given out when bonds are formed so 4 times 463 so that will give us a total energy change of minus 482 kilojoules per mole so the fact that the total energy change or the enthalpy change is negative it tells us that this reaction is exothermic or the reaction of hydrogen with oxygen to give water releases heat or releases energy now the other thing to take note is this that um, if we look at the formula delta h equals to bb minus bf now one way to remember uh, this formula is that it is in alphabetical order so b comes before f so bb minus bf the other thing is this that the minus sign over here already accounts uh, for the fact that energy is given out during bond forming okay so there's no need for you to add a minus sign to any of the bond energy values just use them as they are given in the question the minus sign in the equation already accounts for the fact that energy change involved in bond forming is negative so from the calculation i hope you can see that um, for chemical reactions that involve bond breaking and bond forming there's no way for us to tell by just by looking at it whether it's endothermic or exothermic but if we can know the total amount of energy taken in for bond form for bond breaking versus the total amount of energy given out during bond forming then we will be able to tell whether the reaction is endo or exo all right a reaction is exothermic when the energy absorbed for bond breaking is less than the energy released in bond forming or bond making whereas a reaction is endothermic when the energy taken in for bond breaking is more than the energy given out for forming bonds so a common type of question that you will get in o levels is this that they will tell you in the question whether the reaction is endo or exo so for example over here they tell you in the question that this reaction is exothermic but they will require you to explain in terms of bond breaking and bond forming why this reaction is exothermic so such a question is usually a two mark question uh, the first mark is given for being able to identify that since the reaction is exothermic it means that the total amount of energy uh, given out or released during bond forming is more than the total energy taken in during bond breaking okay the second mark is given for being able to identify the bonds that are formed and the bonds that are broken so in this reaction the bonds that are formed would be your OH bonds and the bonds that are uh, broken would be your HH and OO bonds so a complete answer would look something like this the energy release from the formation of OH bonds is greater than the energy absorbed during the breaking of OO bonds and HH bonds now a common mistake that students will make is this students will say that the energy required for the formation of OH bonds now in this case we will have to mark you wrong why because energy is not required for bond forming energy is given out for bond forming all right so you need to be careful that um, energy is released for forming bonds and energy is taken in or uh, absorbed during breaking of bonds 
So we have seen earlier that when hydrogen reacts with oxygen to give water, that reaction is exothermic. In fact, we know, we have calculated using bond energies that the delta H or enthalpy change is minus 482 kilojoules per mole. Now using that, are we able to get the are we able to know whether the opposite the re reaction or the reverse reaction um, whether it's endo or exo and what is the energy change involved in fact yes we can and it's very simple if we just simply look at the energy level diagram for the first reaction we have 2H2 plus O2 and then as the reactants and then we have 2H2O in your products so this reaction is exothermic and the energy change is minus 482 kilojoules per mole now if we look at the reverse or the opposite reaction and we try to construct an energy level uh, diagram for it um, the reactants now is your water and it's the same re the substances in your reactants is the same as the products for reaction one so we have water over here and it's at the same energy level and your products would be hydrogen two hydrogen and one oxygen again it is at the same energy level as before as the reactants in reaction one so in the opposite reaction i hope you can see that the amount of energy change is the same so the magnitude of enthalpy change is the same the only thing that's changed now is the sign um, so when a reaction is exothermic the reverse reaction will be endothermic and it has the same value uh, for your enthalpy change